There is a brutal, systematic genocide going on inside Burma that few have heard about or seen. The world has ignored the cries of hundreds of thousands who are victims of a brutal regime bent on exterminating them from the face of the earth. They are called the Karen, and they have been held captive to a life and death struggle for over 60 years with the Burmese. All they want is to live in peace in their land, which they call Kartule. The land they called home is difficult and inaccessible to most outsiders. Few have ventured through the dangers to document their culture and struggle, but it is a land of mountains and streams, rice paddies and farms. As you survey the landscape and live with the people, it is easy to forget the imminent dangers poised by the Burmese. But you don't have to brave the war zone inside Burma to see the residual effects of the conflict. One only needs to travel throughout Thailand to see the signs. From the illegal Burmese immigrants who have no rights to education or medical care, to the Maytow Clinic where Dr. Cynthia's team treats Burmese fleeing the ravages of war and genocide, to the refugee camps scattered along the Thai-Burma border. But how desperate the situation is becoming is no better illustrated than if one visits the refugee camps inside Burma along the Thai-Burma border. E2 Da is a refugee camp right inside of Burma. Situated along the banks of the Salring River, a year ago the camp was started with a hundred families fleeing the genocide perpetrated on them by a brutal Burmese regime. Now a year later there are over 4,000 people in the camp and growing. For these refugees, they are between a rock and a hard place. They can't go home because for many of them, the Burmese have destroyed all they had, killed and raped their people and left their villages scattered with landmines. And they can't go to Thailand because the Thai government will arrest them and imprison them if they are caught illegally immigrating. This man illustrates the senseless brutality they face. Walking from his farm, the Burmese army stopped him and harassed him. Fearing for his life, he tried to escape. They shot him four times as he ran away. One bullet entered his left ear and came out of his eye socket. Left for dead, he miraculously recovered and fled to Etuda. So pinned up against the Salring River, these refugees in Etuda cling to the distant hope that someday the war will be over and they can go home. But for now, they survive in the camp. With such rapid influx of refugees, Itu Da has many evident problems. Growing from 400 to 4,000 in one year, they can't keep up with the demand to build housing for the refugees. For these 4,000 people, the only medical care is this small clinic that relies on medical supplies brought in from Thailand. If they don't have medicine, there is nothing they can do. And the closest clinic is a three days journey inside Thailand. It costs $4,000 a year to provide basic medicine for e Da refugees. Another concern is the education for the children in the camp. I want to be you friend. There are over 1,300 school-aged children in e Da. For the Karen, education is a priority and so they have built these schoolhouses. But teachers, teaching supplies, and materials are all on short supply. Peter, the camp director, speaks of the condition of the camp. Today, getting overcrowded that's why we need to set up another session we call Uweklo. Now 63 families mm -hmm. and 300 and uh, now we've got 387 people or something, 89 like this. Now overcrowded, slowly, slowly getting overcrowded now here. Yeah. The majority of the refugees are Christian. To hear the stories of their flight from the war zone and how God saw them through is awe-inspiring. Outpost the uh, army, Burmese army, outpost. Yeah, we have to care, go carefully, not, not, not allow the children to shout or cry. So it's God's grace. When we pass the outpost, near the outpost, no children cry and no, no children have shout. All come. And, and when we pass away, nearly far, a little boy pretty far, you can hear the baby cry, the baby shout. It's, I, I think it's, that, is one, that one is God's grace. Because God worked for us. If we, if the children shout at if the army, army knew, hear that, they will shoot us with a big weapon. You can also hear families having devotions at night and in the morning. So as fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, we can do something. 
Pray that the Burmese regime will cease their brutal attacks on the Karen and other ethnic minorities in Burma, and they can return to their homeland. Pray that the refugees will be able to have adequate food, housing, medicine, and educational supplies. You can also support the effort financially. The medical clinic needs $1,000 per quarter to buy medicine. Only $4,000 per year will supply this clinic with the basic medicine to treat the camp's inhabitants. You can also support a child in e 2 da $20 a month will sponsor a child with one meal a day, pay their teachers, and provide teaching supplies and medical care. For this child, education is a promise of a future and a hope. A year ago, he saw his father brutally murdered by Burmese while he was forced to watch. When he came to the camp, he wanted to become a soldier and kill the Burmese. Now, the story is different. You can make a difference. Partner with Love in Action Asia and Pastor Joe and give hope and a future to these victims of a traumatic war and bring Jesus to them in a practical way. Hi, I'm Pastor Joe with Love in Action, here on the banks of the Salween River, Corinne State, Eastern Burma. And we're asking you to join us as we try to bring relief to the refugees here. I'm in Itouda refugee camp with almost 4,000 people who over the last year and a half have had to flee their homes as the Burmese army has come down and burned out their villages, raped their women, sisters and mothers, and killed their fathers and their brothers not for being in the army or fighting against them, but for simply being out farming their crops in a rice paddy. This persecution, this genocide does not have to go on. We need to raise awareness of what is actually happening. And so I ask you to join us, telling others, sending emails, writing your congressmen, letting them know that you're not gonna stand for this anymore. And I ask you to join us as we bring uh, medicine, food, and relief to these people. Won't you join me? What you just saw is actually happening, and you can make a difference. God bless you. Say, forget about it. Forget about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. How you doing? How you doing? All right. <laughs>